Hi, this is Ben Finio from Science Buddies, and this video is a tutorial for our light tracking Bristlebot project. You may have heard of regular Bristlebots, which are fun robots students can build on the head of a toothbrush using a vibrating motor and a coin cell battery. They're a lot of fun, but their movement is completely random, and there's no real intelligence or steering to their behavior. A light tracking Bristlebot is a more advanced robot that uses the same concept. It has two vibrating motors that power its motion, but these motors are controlled by two light sensors. This allows the robot to drive forward or steer left or right in response to a flashlight. This video will show you how to build these robots using a Science Buddies kit of parts. So the first thing you will do is assemble the body of the robot. To do that, you will need the breadboard, the battery pack, and the two AAA batteries, which are all included in your Bristlebot kit. You will also need two toothbrush heads, which are not included in the kit. And there's one important note about the toothbrush heads here. The type with slanted bristles work much better. So if you look closely at this toothbrush, you see that the longest bristles are all slanted backwards. And when you put that down, that's going to help the robot move forward, because those bristles are all pointed in one direction. So when the robot vibrates, it kind of buzzes along and moves opposite the direction of that slant. That is in contrast to toothbrushes with straight bristles, which when you use them, they kind of don't really have a direction, so the robot might kind of move randomly instead of in one consistent direction. Unfortunately, this, um, this type of bristle, sorry, toothbrush is usually much cheaper than the fancy kind with slanted bristles. So if you need to buy a lot of these for a classroom, one option is to use scissors to trim them. So buy the straight bristled kind if you need to save money, and then use scissors to trim the bristles, so then when the robot sits on the ground, it's going to tilt forward, and all those bristles will point back, and it'll wind up having the same effect as this more expensive toothbrush with the slanted bristles. So regardless of what you wind up buying, you're going to want to use scissors or diagonal cutters or heavy pliers to cut the heads off the toothbrush. You might not be able to cut all the way through, in which case you can bend it back and forth to snap it, and then you're going to attach everything to the breadboard, which serves as the body of the robot. So I'm going to put this aside, and for this example, we're going to use these two slanted ones. So first, take your battery pack and your two AAA batteries. Look and see that there are plus signs on one end of the battery. So there's a little plus sign there indicating the positive end. And if you look in the battery pack, there are also plus signs in the battery pack. So you want to make sure the plus sign on the battery lines up with the plus sign in the battery pack. Another way to think about it is that the flat end of the battery goes up against the spring, not the end with this little bump. So you're going to put the two batteries into the battery pack. And if you have enough time, you can have students do this. Otherwise, you can prepare this part in advance and then just let the students build the circuit. So there I have the two batteries in my battery pack. Now if you look at the bottom of the breadboard, there is a paper backing protecting a layer of sticky adhesive beneath that. And your goal is going to be to put the battery pack centered like this, and then the toothbrushes on either side of the battery pack with the slant and the bristles pointing back towards these battery pack wires. So peel off the protective paper backing and try to be careful when you do this because this does get messy if you try to peel off the adhesive and try over so you start over so you really want to do your best to get it right on the first try get that battery pack nice and centered and then take your two toothbrushes and stick them on on either side of the battery pack now depending on the toothbrush you picked some of them have a nice, nice smooth surface that will stick to this adhesive tape very nicely. Some of them have a bit of a bumpier surface or a textured surface that doesn't stick as well, in which case you can use a hot glue gun, put a little strip of hot glue on top of that toothbrush head, and then when you stick it on, it should stay in place. So there I have assembled the base to my robot, and now when I put it down, eventually this is going to be the front of the robot, this end with the wires will be the back, so the robot should drive forward in this direction. Now, the next thing, again, you can prepare this in advance based on how much time you have, and then hand this part to the students, and let them build the circuit. 
And when you build the circuit, you want to hold the robot in this orientation so the battery pack wires are on the right. And then that will correspond to the diagrams for building the circuit that you'll see in this video and in the accompanying PDF handout. Now, one unfortunate thing about these small breadboards is that they do not have labels printed on them. Many larger breadboards have numbers for the rows and letters for the columns. These tiny breadboards don't have enough room for that printing. So if you want, you can take a fine tip marker and add numbers and letters. There might not be enough space to label all of them, but maybe you could label, say, every fifth row just to make it a little easier for your students to keep track. And now you can follow along with the diagrams to build the circuit one component at a time. Now, to start building the circuit, there's really two different approaches you could take to leading a classroom through this. You could use a projector or a large screen if you have one to either show this video and pause it at each step or project the PDF up on a screen and walk the entire class through the circuit one component at a time and try to keep everybody on the same page. Alternatively, you could give students copies of the PDF or if they have computers, you could let them watch this video and let them work at their own pace. So we'll leave that up to you. Uh, depending on your students and their experience using a breadboard, but the video is going to walk you through one component at a time and show you how to build the robot. So again, we're going to assume you're at least familiar with the basics of using a breadboard. If not, there is a good tutorial on the Science Buddies website that will go over the background about using a breadboard in much more detail. But for now, you just want to orient the robot with the battery pack leads to the right so it will match up with these diagrams. And again, remember that the small breadboards do not actually have labels printed on them. We're going to have labels on the diagrams, but you'll need to either just count the rows and columns or use a very fine tip marker to make your own labels on the breadboard. The first thing you'll connect is a series of jumper wires. Now, in electronics, typically red is used for positive and black is used for negative, and the other colors are usually arbitrary and just kind of up to you depending on how you want to color code your circuit. Our kit does include wires of specific colors to make it easier for students to follow the diagrams, so we do recommend actually picking jumper wires to match the colors, even though in general you don't need to worry about that. The robot will still work if you substitute a blue wire for a yellow wire, for example. However, if you follow along with our directions, first you want to connect a yellow jumper wire from hole E1 to F1, a short red jumper wire from hole E8 to F8, a short black wire from E11 to F11, and another short yellow wire from E15 to F15. Now you might notice that the wires are a little too long to make those connections if you leave them flat, so you can bend them into a U shape if necessary, or a little C shape if that helps, just to get them the exact right distance between those holes. And again, especially when you start out here, you really want to count those rows carefully because if you get a jumper wire off by just one row, that effect can kind of cascade and it'll mess everything up following this. So count the rows carefully and make sure you get those in the right place. Next, you're going to connect the two potentiometers. So these are the blue rectangular pieces with a little white knob. You're going to orient them so the gray pins are to your left and plug the first one into holes H1, H2, and H3, and then the second one into holes H15, H16, and H17. Next, you're going to take two black jumper wires, a long black one, and connect that from hole F2 to F, sorry, from F2 to G11. And you're gonna to wanna to hook that one a little bit to the left in sort of an L shape to make room for another part in the next step. And then you're going to take a medium black jumper wire and go from F16 to H11. Next, you're going to connect the power switch, which has three pins, to holes G7, G8, and G9. The switch is symmetric, so it doesn't matter if you flip it upside down. It'll work the same in either direction. And again, that one long black jumper wire from the previous step might be kind of in the way, so you can bend that out of the way a little bit if necessary and then slide the switch down towards row 17, or towards the bottom of the breadboard from this view, which is the off position, just so you don't accidentally turn the robot on when you're connecting things later. Next, you're going to connect the first motor 
So this is the right motor, because in this diagram the robot is facing to the left, so even though the motor appears on the top of the diagram when the robot is driving forward, this motor will be on the right. You're going to attach the motor to the side of the robot with either a glue gun or double-sided foam tape. Make sure the little weight on the end of the motor is free to spin. You don't accidentally want to tape or glue that in place. And then connect the red lead to hold J8 and the blue lead to hold E16. After that, you're going to connect the left motor, follow a very similar procedure where you attach it to the side of the robot using glue or double-sided foam tape, make sure the weight is free to spin, and then connect the red lead to hole I8 and the blue lead to hole E2. Now, you'll probably notice that your breadboard is starting to get pretty crowded. It might be kind of hard to get your fingers in there and get everything in the right place. So this is a very good spot to stop and check your wiring. Uh, we'll talk a little more about this later, but the most common mistake when building this robot is just to have one wire misplaced somewhere, and then it can be kind of confusing when your robot isn't working or isn't behaving properly. So just as you're going along, you want to be very careful to make sure you're putting everything in the place to exactly match the diagram. So this is a good point to stop and check that before you proceed. Next, you're going to connect the two MOSFETs. These are a special type of transistor, so the T in that acronym stands for transistor. And you want to orient these so the writing on the front of them is facing to your left, and the large metal tab is facing to your right. And these are a static-sensitive part, so be careful not to touch the pins or you know shuffle your feet on carpet before you handle them. Put one of them into holes D1, D2, and D3, and the next one into holes D15, D16, and D17. And again, MOSFETs have three different pins called the gate, the drain, and the source that all serve different functions, so it's important not to put this part in backwards or your circuit won't work properly. So make sure that, again, when you're holding the robot as shown, as oriented in the diagram here, that the writing is facing to the left and the large metal tab is facing to the right. Next, you're going to connect two more jumper wires. You're going to connect one of the long black wires from C3 to C11, and a medium black wire from C17 to D11. You're then going to connect the two photoresistors, which are the light sensors for your robot. So these are what are going to detect the light and allow it to steer right and left. Take one of them and plug it into holes A1 and A8, and the other one to holes B8 and A15. Now you're almost done, you're ready to connect the battery pack leads. So remember you should have already attached the battery pack to the bottom of the breadboard when you built the robot's body. You're going to take the red lead and connect it to hole J7, and the black lead to hole J11. Now, if you've connected everything properly and your power switch is in the off position, your robot should be off and nothing should happen, but if you see or smell smoke or any part of the robot feels hot, that means you have a short circuit and something is wired incorrectly somewhere, so you want to immediately disconnect the battery pack leads, hopefully before any components of the circuit have been damaged by getting too hot, and then go back and double check all of your wiring because you have a short circuit somewhere if that happens. So, now you should have everything connected, but again, we really want to emphasize double and triple check all of your wiring before you proceed because it only takes one wire being misplaced to prevent the robot from working at all or to cause some strange behavior like the robot always just going in circles and turning in one direction. So especially for students who are new to breadboards and working with tiny breadboards like this that do not have labels on them, it is really easy to just glance at the circuit and everything looks okay, but then when you zoom in and look closely, you can find just one wire that was off by one hole in one location, and then that will prevent the circuit from working. So, depending on your students and their experience level, you might want to go around the classroom and do a quick check now, or you can proceed to actually testing the robots and then troubleshoot as issues arise. So this video has shown you how to assemble the robot's body and build the circuit, and the next video will take you through actually using the robot and the troubleshooting issues that you will most likely see doing this in a classroom. This video was created by Science Buddies with generous support from the Best Buy Foundation. There is also a PDF that accompanies this video that includes a complete breadboard diagram and a table with all the circuit components, their location on the breadboard, and a brief explanation of what they do.